hope you all are doing well so uh, this is the last video of this follicular monitoring series and uh, in this video we are going to discuss about the whys of the pre or the peri ovulatory scan the basics we already know like when to start this phase and what we look for what are the size and all criteria okay so uh, the thing is the follicle is termed as dominant follicle when the size grows like 10 to 12 mm size it is called as dominant follicle it grows at the rate of 2 to 3 mm per day and then it is about to rupture it will ovulate when the size reaches 18 to 20 or like 18 to 24 mm in size ovulation happens okay so by seeing the size we can predict ovulation is going to happen few things seeing which we can say that after this much hours ovulation is going to happen like cumulus euphorus see this is the cumulus euphorus the internal bleb like structure this bleb like structure in the dominant follicle is called cumulus euphorus so this cumulus euphorus appears approximately 36 hours before ovulation okay 36 hours before cumulus before ovulation the sonolucent halo appears around 24 hours before ovulation and there is separation and enfolding of the inner layers approximately 6 to 10 hours before ovulation now when to give ovulation a trigger we already have seen that in stimulated cycles we induce we trigger ovulation via injection beta hcg im injections so when the ovulation inducing agent is used is like gonadotropin then usually we give trigger when the size of the dominant follicle reaches 18 to 20 mm and we give trigger agent when the size reaches approximately 20 to 22 mm in cycles in cycles that are induced via clomiphene citrate okay so uh, by seeing the cumulus euphorus by seeing the size of the prominent follicle we can predict that at this time ovulation is going to happen okay and thus we can stop random beta hcg injections and thus can prevent ohss okay so when the follicle becomes dominant follicle like the size reaches 10 mm then the perivascular perifollicular vascularity starts rising and when it matures like size reaches like 24 mm the there is very good flow there is very good perifollicular vascularity so this so this psv is directly related to the lh okay lh surge the lh surge starts when psv approximately reaches 10 centimeter per second and as maturation happens the psv is increasing and more than 10 cm per second PSV is reached 36 hours prior ovulation. LH increases, PSV increases and just an hour before rupture, PSV like reaches approximately 45 cm per second. So this is about the PSV. What happens to the RI? Perifollicular vascularity increases as the follicle matures. This RI decreases two days before ovulation. It is lowest at the time of ovulation. And it remains low for the next four days and then increases to like 0.5 in the mid luteal phase. So this is about the PSV and this is about RI. Seeing this PSV, we can time the timing of IUI. Like when the PSV is more than 15 centimeter per second, we can plan once or twice IUI. And if the PSV is like more than 20 centimeter per second, single timed IUI can be of very good help. Okay. As we all now know that PSV starts increasing and RI starts decreasing as the follicular grows towards rupture. If vice versa happens like the PSV is decreasing and the RI is increasing means the follicle will not rupture. It will not ovulate instead it will turn into luteinized unruptured follicle. Okay, And also if the PSV is less than 10 per centimeter per second and if this follicle gets fertilized then there are high chances of chromosomal abnormalities in, in the fetus formed by fertilization of this follicle with PSV of lesser than 10 centimeter per second. Okay, so now know the, know the value, know the importance of this PSV more than 10 centimeter per second and the decreasing RI. Okay. Uh, next thing is ovulation okay so the pre periovulatory scanning has been done and also one thing remained is the endometrium why we look for the endometrium because because higher the vascularity in the endometrial zones higher is the greater better is the morphology of the endometrium like the triple line better are the chances of pregnancy better is the outcome of implantation so these two things the follicle and the endometrium together are very important so the once the follicle matures there is ovulation there is ovulation so the dominant follicle ruptures and it forms corpus luteum cyst the thick walled crenated shaped corpus luteal cyst along with some free fluid in the 
in the pouch of Douglas. The perifollicular vascularity is again very high along the corpus luteal cyst. So now we don't have to stop scanning once ovulation happens. We have to call the patient in the secretory phase as well to look for something like luteinized unruptured follicle and the luteal phase defects. So we have to call the patient in secretory scan and look for the corpus luteal cyst. The peri corpus luteal vascularity is like ri should be 0 0.35 to 0 0.5 and the psv is like 10 to 15 centimeter per second we all know this corpus luteal cyst is important for the purpose of secreting progesterone and this progesterone is very important for the early phases of embryogenesis and implantation if this ri and psv are not in this range then there are very high chances of luteal phase defect that is the corpus luteal cyst is not working well there is very short luteal phase existing for just less than 10 days and there is lesser progesterone so there are high chances of early miscarriages okay so we have to look for this corpus luteal cyst in the secretory scan another thing is like uh, we have given the beta hcg trigger for ovulation for ovulation and after 36 hours like 36 to 48 hours ovulation is not happening instead the dominant follicle turns into a luteinized unruptured follicle we can see internal septations and hemorrhagic products okay internal debris the follicle has not ruptured and instead it has turned into luteinized unruptured follicle and the psv is very low here and the ri is very high here so this is luteinized unruptured follicle and also in the secretory scan we have to look for the uterine artery doppler indices like the ri should be 0 0.48 to 0 0.51 or 2 and the uterine artery pi should be like 2 to 2.5 mm okay so these are the important values of secretory scan uh, so i think uh, i have made this topic easier for you and uh, uh, i think uh, you will not now finish the scan just in the just after ovulation happens we should call the patient again in the secretory phase to look for the corpus luteum to rule out any luteal phase defect and to rule out any luteinized unruptured follicle so if you haven't watched my previous videos, I'll recommend you to watch that first because those are the basics and I would also recommend to watch the video on treatment of female infertility to know better about this ovulation induction and triggering agents. Okay, so thank you.